time period. I think he's Victorian, isn't he? So, we get to pick what explorer we want to start with. Uh, as you play more, you can unlock people. I think we're going to... Who's got the tent? We're going to play with this guy. Frederick Courtney Sellis, British explorer, officer, and world-famous big-game hunter. Tactical mastery, additional re-roll in combat. Oh, this game is... It, it's roguelike, a lot of fun. I No, I've never played this on YouTube before. Jeff Major played this on YouTube, like, years ago when it was an alpha. And then uh, we get helpers along the way and objects. So here's a shovel. You can use that to dig up treasure. Here's a gun for hunting. Here's a campsite. It's probably one of the best things in the game. <laughs> yes, Lord. I wish this was multiplayer. I don't think you could really do it well, but it would be cool if other people could be the explorers against you. Yeah, 1F Jeff is how I discovered this years ago. Uh, you can use rope. There's whiskey. Some people like whiskey in the game, though you can become an alcoholic. And then this is our crew. We have a donkey who can carry additional stuff. We've got a cook who can cook meat into edible food. And then a Parsi trader, a wandering merchant from the Orient. Welcome back to the Explorers Club, old friend. Have you heard that we are building a statue to honor our most famous member? Is that your penis? Word is that you've got a good chance of seeing your likeness on that statue. However, I'm afraid to tell you, you're not the only candidate. You and your rivals have six expeditions to prove who is the most famous explorer within our club. Yeah, I started Hey, Duddy, how you did too? I started watching Jeff pretty early on, too, like back when he was doing Liberal Crime Squad. So these are the people who we are adventuring against. Alexandra David Neal, Richard F. Burton, Alistair Crowley, did you speak with the dead? And Dion uh, Fortune. Um, we're going to play on the middle difficulty mode. This is basically a roguelike game, so we will probably die. And Lauren, don't judge me that I can't do an English accent. <laughs> so we're going to pick where we're going to go. Apparently Crawley is in the Sorrowful Dungeon. We can either pick Down in Africa, the Rich Dry Lands. Or we can pick the Grand Jungle in uh, South America. I think we're going to go to South America. Uh, Birth of the Federation, what? That's a really good game. I'm not going to do an a English accent. <laughs> yeah, we already did Africa. That's true. That's true. After a good night's rest, I made haste and arrived at the docks. We had a little time before the ship would be ready. So I took some pleasure in visiting my name in the newspapers. Well, obviously, we're a very upstanding individual. Sir, should I get ready for the expedition? Yes, yes, yes. I'm too busy thinking of myself on the front page of the newspapers. Sister Romana approached me this morning. She had boarded the ship and demanded we accompany her to her native village once we had arrived at her destination in order to spread the word of God. Yes, let us teach the heathens of God. Accepted. So I've never had this nun join us before, Sister Romana. Um, up there are the dice, and when you get in combat, you will use those. So she's got green dice, which are, um, those are defensive dice. Our hero here, Frederick Courtney Sellis, has red dice, which are attack dice. The blue ones are perception, and you'll use those for combat or certain, um, there's certain checks you'll do. I have not seen the show Taboo on FX. Uh, here's our cook, Etienne, um, uh, Mata... Montagnat, it's French, I probably butchered it. And Riyad Terrapore. Ooh, he's good at fighting. Oh, and they have other bonuses or minuses. He's sexist. Some of these people are real assholes. Like, you can get racists in your group. Not that you necessarily want to. He is sexist. That means he's prejudiced against people of the opposite sex. And that will affect you later on. Here is his loyalty. So if you do something nice for a woman and treat him as an equal, he will not like that. This is on Steam. In fact, you can probably... Un I don't know if it's on sale right now. He's got Hegel, so he's good at bartering. This guy is racist. So if we do things for the natives, uh, Etienne here will not like that. And if their loyalty gets too low, they can leave you or do bad things to you. He's very good at cooking meat. Our guy... Oops. Let's see. Ooh. He gets one extra combat reroll. That's really good. Tactical mastery. Um, we're going to escort a missionary. That is our mission. And then the missionary is also racist. That's great. 
Um, she, she could, we can rest the missions for free because we have her with us, and then she has a strong mind. I I accepted um, the sister since I would gladly do my part to help the word of God. And this is mission number one. Isn't there music in this part? Because I can put background music on if there's not. I thought there was music for the whole thing. Okay, there we go. I do have a lot of assholes in my crew. I was finishing up my morning ablu ablu ablutions. What's ablution? Is that like taking a shit off the side of the ship? I need to learn. Y'all, this just became a learning stream. Ablution. The act of washing oneself, often used humorously for formal effect. Oh, okay, so we washed our anus. I finished up my morning asshole washing as we arrived at our expedition area. The land lay open in front of us like an invitation to an adventure. Uh, let's refill some water while we're here. That is free. We're going to do a bunch of that. We're just going to dump this if we don't need it. Water, water everywhere. Let's have a drink. I made sure to bring some additional water rations from our vessel's stocks. Carefully prep or careful preparation would be critical to our Star Trek. However, I had to get moving to prevent my rivals. Oh, I hope that didn't waste time. Oh shit, we better begin the expedition. Expedition assholes. Sister Romana had uh, pinpointed the location of the villain she, she wanted to reach on her map. Aren't the villagers going to love her? She's racist. She's going to come in and be like, your gods are stupid and I hate y'all. And you can see right here their negative traits. Two racists, one sexist. I thought there was music through the whole thing. Okay, there we go. Also, um, different things uh, take more time to travel through. Like through the jungle, if you have some machetes, you can go through there quicker. We don't have any machetes. This is also our sanity bar up here. When it gets down to zero, bad things start happening. Like our people start killing each other or deserting. So let us enter the village. We carefully approached a mysterious native village. The natives were well-armed and formidable warriors. We accompanied the missionary to the village chief, who wanted us or to reward us with information about the preeminent landmarks to look upon in the vicinity, including a holy shrine, which we marked on our map. Excellent. The villagers welcomed us with smiles on their faces. We seem to be very popular in this region. I don't think we really have anything to trade, but why don't we see? Um, so, can we get some jewels? Wait, what are this? Native trinkets. A horn flute. This here is a bonus. We won't be popular for long indeed. So true. I've never played the killing floor, too. No, I haven't. Oh, uh, this little blue thing here is Hegel. Because our merchant dude, I don't know where he is. He's good at haggling. You can see this is how much they want. They want less. Uh, will they accept water? No. They're like, we got plenty of water. Can I give you some fire water? Ooh, I can. And then why don't we ask for... Mini puffs? Oh, these things are creepy. Let's see. We can give this to our people to increase loyalty. Uh, I just want the jewels. No? Okay, fuck it. We're just gonna leave. No deal, bro. We'll, we'll find other things along the way. Let's see if we can recruit anyone. I asked around to find out if some of them were interested enough to join my cause. Not long after, I found a group of would-be new Trek members and had decided on a new recruit. So we can either hire another donkey. That's kind of interesting. It'd be nice to have two donkeys. Gifos, the animal handler. What is he good at? His animal capacity is one. Oh, we can carry more with him. He's got a good reputation. He doesn't seem to have any negative traits. Or this animal handler. He's superstitious, though. Let's pick Giefos. He's good with the donkey. You can see we get an extra storage spot now. And let's rest in the village. Giefos, the animal handler, joined our trek. I hope that doesn't mean he touches its naughty bits. We felt oh, uh, comfortable in the midst of the overjoyed villagers. We're going to rest for the night. I told the team to unpack our things and prepare for the night. We spent an enjoyable evening with the natives. Later that night, Gahifos approached me with a request. He had fallen in love with one of the natives and decided to leave our track and stay with his beloved? 
What the fuck? <laughs> you live here, Gihafos. You are one of the natives. Maybe he just found out we have a bunch of racist sexists. So he's like, you know, one second thought, I all of a sudden fell in love with this lady here. No, Gihifos, you will stay with us. Even though it pained me greatly, we could not afford to lose anyone. I had to insist on him staying with us. Gihifos was obviously very disappointed at his decision. You work for us now. I am the one who knocks. But I was sure he would soon forget about that occurrence, what with all the incredible adventures that awaited us. Gihifos, you don't need love. You now get to help me get it in the paper. That will make you much more satisfied. I got a splendid night's rest. The next morning I awoke to the laughter of natives. Ha ha! We felt more welcome here. They remained very polite, and we felt like special guests in this settlement. And you can see our uh, sanity went up because we rested here, so we're going to leave. We packed up the trek and headed out as new adventures awaited us. So we lost... Um... How do I move the map? Okay, there we go. We're right here. This is one of the things they told us about, because they told us about some shrine or something. We lost the sister, because she's here to be a missionary for them now, and we joined... Uh, we have Gihafos. He's a local, so he may not follow us home after this expedition, Lawrence, so you don't have to feel too bad that we kind of made him stay against his will. And he's angry. Oh my god, his loyalty is horrible, too. Whatever. Come along, we must adventure! Ooh. What is up there? Let's examine the shrine. A temple long forgotten by mankind stood bathed in light before us. Its stone walls were covered with ornate engravings. Grand stairs led up in an enormous doorway. A thick layer of sand seemed to surround the structure. So part of what we're going to want to do is find artifacts. So when we can go back, we can be like, look at all these artifacts, we're the best explorer. We will enter the shrine. Before us lay some kind of ceremonial room. If this place held any riches, I knew we would find them here. Our steps echoed, echoed, echoed as we approached the sacred altar. We did already break someone. So we have found here the tome page of Eagle Scout, a page that was ripped from an ancient tome. It is written in unearthly alien letters, but for some reason you know you can read it. I don't know what it does. Yoink. And a golden mask of some guy who's probably dead. I'm sure the natives won't care that we took their shit. I would not leave empty-handed, though. The artifact would sit atop that altar no longer. We took whatever we could and proceeded outside as the plant life began to wither and die. It's a curse! A drastic climate shift ravaged, ravaged this region, and we were responsible. So we're going to keep moving. Dog shit! It's not our fault. Global warming. Ah, uh, there's some butterflies. If you have the uh, right stuff, you can capture them. You can see the environment is just getting wrecked. We have unleashed some ancient terror. <laughs> Not my fault. So it's going to be quicker if we go around. Oh, what if we go down here? And we, you can see the little rope icon right there. We're going to be using one of our ropes to get through the swamp. Ooh, what is this? We arrive at a magnificent waterfall. It's, it, it was an awe-inspiring sight. The water cooled the air, creating a fresh breeze. This game is really good, and usually it's pretty cheap on a Steam sale. So we have plenty of water. We don't need that. We can rest overnight. We also have a tent for it, but let's rest overnight. We settled down to recuperate. This was a good place, and I was sure we would get some well-deserved rest here. I kept notes of Gehefos' every behavioral quirk. And of every piece of clothing and equipment he used. Oh my god! I thought we weren't the racist one. I thought the crew was. I'm watching that native. I'm going to make sure he doesn't take an ounce of my cloth. He's helping us out, dude. Be cool. He answered all my questions patiently and politely. He moved so effortlessly through this alien world. Whereas I was stumbling over my feet most of the time. Oh, I hope that's not small spock, spock spreading. So we're going to rest for a few days. The longer we rest, though... Let's see, is this the button? The longer we spend on this journey, uh, the more likely the other explorers are to do better than us, because there's a bonus for getting home first. 
So you kind of want to balance, are you going to be home first, or are you going to try and be back with the most stuff? As we prepared for departure, I knew we would miss the melodic tone of the falling water. This place buoyed my soul. We could rest for one more night to get our sanity up all the way. I think we're going to do it. I instructed the trek to halt, and I told my people to rest. It was warm and starry night. Riyad Terrapur, our sexist trader, told me that a fellow had advised him about a trader that was traveling these lands. If we made haste, we might be able to trade for some valuable goods. It would be cool if there was a way to make a multiplayer. Okay, so there's a trader right up there, but it's right by that elephant. Oh, and we can promote one of our guys. Ah, shit. If we promote the native Gihifos, he may not come with us at the end, because he's not loyal to us at all, and he's native to these lands. I guess we'll promote our sexist trader. I really want to see what's to buy there. On the left here, you can see how close they are to getting home. There's Alistair Crowley. There's Dion Fortune. The others may have got it home already. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, the other thing is this compass here will point towards the exit, but sometimes it'll point the wrong way because there'll be magnetic mountains sometimes in the way that will... Uh, get in the way of that. Ah, uh, shit. Let's see if we can go down here, figure this out. Oh, no, there's an elephant. That night, Gihifo slowly stood up from his place in the fire while cursing loudly, loudly cursing our names. He sprinted into the night and disappeared. The challenges of the journey had been too much for him. So because his loyalty was low, um, I'd choose your own adventure books would probably have been something Pee Wee would have read um, in high school. <laughs> I have some behind me from when I was doing streams of those. Those are a blast. So, there goes our native dude. He just fucking bolted into the woods, the jungles. We can attack an elephant herd. That is not a good idea. Let's examine the shrine. We stood before a temple comprised of huge stones. Huge, bodily stones. Its stone walls were covered with ornate engravings. A circle of dried up blood had been drawn around the whole structure as a warning for anybody else that dared enter. Hey, that seems safe. <laughs> His loyalty and maybe that some of the group is racist and that our leader was like, You didn't touch my towels, did you? No cloth for you. Um, maybe I'll eventually do more um, choose your own adventure books. I didn't know how many people dug those streams. I had fun doing those. The building was cold to the touch. I wondered if the stone was resistant to warmth. Resistant to warmth. Does he just want to love on it? I'll love you, stone building. It's okay. Or if there's some other explanation. Let's go in. Probably go, 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 ghosts. Before us lay some kind of ceremonial room. If this place held any riches, I knew we would find them here. I held my breath as we discovered an ancient altar in the center. Alright, so let's leave them some of our water. And then we'll just take the shrine pendulum. A uh, peculiar artifact which reacts when being close to the shrine. So this thing will move around when we're near a shrine. And then we'll take this golden eggplant. Oh, never mind, spirits. Here, you can have a little bit of our water. <laughs> the wall has commitment issues. I would not leave empty-handed. The treasure was ours for the taking. That's like Indiana Jones. We put something of hopefully similar weight. I began to shiver uncontrollably. It was cold all of a sudden. I could see my own breath crystallize in the air, and every breath was like tiny needles that were being jammed into my nose and throat. Uh, we want to avoid these elephants. Okay, cool. Elephants are peaceful. If it's red, I guess they'll attack you. Let's approach this trader. The roaming merchant caravan had pitched up camp here. The mysteriously dressed trader had a lot of valuable goods on offer. A collection of lost and founds. He probably presented us with a selection of his wares. We could not help but think that he had more valuables to sell. I probably wouldn't do Strange Brigade. That's not really my game so much. I mean... Uh, Strange Brigade does look really cool with the visual style. Uh, let's see, a flare invented by Martha J. Costin. <laughs> Do you think our trader would be like, no woman could invent a flare? Damn it, Riyadh, knock that off. <laughs> Originally intended for use uh, for signaling at sea, but it can be helpful revealing nearby areas. Do you think they ever shot that, like, into the, uh, sailing st sails? A sextant? 
a navigation instrument to measure distances between two visible objects. That gives us a bigger area we can see. Uh, I really don't want to clear or uh, fill up too much of our inventory. Torches would have been nice. Oh, but we got too much good stuff. They have nothing here that I absolutely want. Can we get anything for free, like some beans? Oh, we can! We can get some free beans. Here, take some water, because we need room in our inventory. No, actually, we'll keep the water deal. The trader seemed expectant regarding our possible return to relieve them stock. So we're overburdened now. That'll slow us down. We'll use more sanity, but we can eat these beans. How do I eat them? Eat them. Left click to use when diary is closed. The diary is closed. Eat them. Eat them beans. Here, we'll get rid of the water. Now can we eat them? No, I don't want to... I don't know why they won't eat the... It says left click to use when diary is closed. Isn't the diary closed? Oh, this is the emergency escape thing, too, is you can get a balloon to leave, but you can only take one person with you. <laughs> so we're going to keep going west. Hopefully we could use the beans at some point. Give me a second. Let me tab out of the game, tab back in, and see if that solves it. I don't know why we can't eat them. I could have sworn we were supposed to be able to. You can also see our little shrine detector going off. It might be detecting the shrine we already... Um, visited and what we're basically doing is following the uh oh there's a hyena and there's some sort of bug eat the damn beans oh wait maybe they're not hungry i thought they could though i thought that that was just about sanity tin containing good old english beans Ooh, what's down here that's how we get out of here. That's the Golden Pyramid. So we could take a risk. Let's see if we can do this without fucking up too bad. Let's attack the hyenas. Oh, he's got jungle fever. Death awaits these lands. Hopefully this does not go terribly bad. <laughs> okay, so we're fighting the two hyenas. Here's our group. Here's our leader, Frederick Courtney Salas. Here's our, our uh, Etienne, our chef. And there's Riyad, our trader. And when we roll here, you can see whose uh, dice is who. These are, this is like Fred's. This is our gun. So we get a shot with that. And you can get bonuses sometimes. Some things stack for bonuses. I don't remember what all do or not. Ages since I've done this. Okay, so these two can uh, combine for a headbutt. So now that guy is stunned. Uh, let's reroll this one. I think we want a shield. Is it these two that work together? Yeah, these two. You can see one by itself is just an attack. This by itself is just a defend. But when you merge these two, you get two damage and two shield. So now we have some shield defense in case they attack us. And then let's do a quick shot. And then I believe he's stunned. Yeah, you can see he's stunned. So he's not going to hurt us. His friend will attack, though. He did damage our chef, and the shield did protect us some. Uh, why don't we put... Headbutt's not going to matter there, because we would kill him. All right, let's headbutt the other. I like they're going to headbutt a hyena. <laughs> Don't worry, friends. I've got this. Wham! With his head. What for? <laughs> uh, let's re-roll these. I don't think these two together do anything. Oh, they do! We can kick with this. He headbutted them, and then he kicked them. Fuck you, hyena. So he's stunned, so he can't hurt us at all. I could have sworn that was something. Oh, I think we, that's all we need right there is probably just two damage anyway. Looking for too much in the way of bonuses. Hey, Loudgo, how you doing? We deprived the dead of anything useful. We lost one standing. So we can take these with us. Um, oh, shit. I should have read this. We don't need the water. What's worth the most? 
It has a value of 15, 2 for fame, or 5 for funds. I guess it doesn't really matter which of these we take. So we're going to take the uh, hyena pelts with us. And then we're going to leave. The pyramid of gold beckons us to victory. Hooray! Huzzah! Huzzah! If danger were eliminated, where would the fun come from? That's what he says when he sends them to the front. After such an endeavor, extraordinary pride overcame me. I knew the name Frederick Courtney Sellis would not be forgotten. Forgotten. For the Empire, fortune and glory. So this is our final score for the first expedition. And this is a roguelike. When you die, you are dead. There's no, okay, I'm going to go back to my save. We were first, so we got a big old speed bonus for being the first to come back. Fantastic! How marvelous! Oh, wait, that's our uh, chef. For queen and country! So we got to pick a perk because we succeeded. You get to any time you come back alive. So what are the three perks we get to pick from? Um, explosive expert, increased radius of di dynamite explosions. That's good, but I don't know if we're going to have any dynamite. Arctic Explorer, reduced movement cost in deep snow. I'm, I don't think I'm going to do that because I don't know how often we're going to be in the Arctic. Black Market, access more gear when equipping your trek before heading out into the unknown. Let's try that. Frederick is not afraid of the um, illegal if it helps him. So now we can see how Alistair Crawley did. Um, who is that? Dion. Francis Burton. Alexandra. And then now we'll see how we did. So we are currently in third place. But we have these four things we took back with us. Um, so we can either give this to the fancy club we're a part of to get some fame, give it to a museum for fame, or we can auction it off for money. We're gonna sell the, what's gift do? We're gonna sell this for some money. I think that's our money right there. So we're gonna sell one of these hyena pelts. We're gonna sell another hyena pelt. Now, if you look at this one, this was worth a lot of fame. That's true, we did live. <laughs> so we're gonna give this to the museum. Oh, wait, gift is giving it to the museum. So watch what happens when I gift it to the museum. Boom! Suck on that, Crawley! They're like, oh, this is a very fancy artifact. Frederick, you're the best. And then the golden mask, we will probably gift that too. Suck on that, Crawley. So now we have a very big early lead because of how generous we are. So now we're going to start the second of six expeditions. We can either go to the horrible dry lands... Or we can go up to the Arctic. But we didn't take the Arctic bonus, so I probably am not going to the Arctic. Give me just a second, and then we'll do the second expedition. I like that loud goat. That's how we should say, say that to Eat a dick, Alistair Crawley! <laughs> I don't know, the Arctic is a little interesting, but uh, kind of tempted to go to the Arctic. Does anyone have a preference between the Arctic and the horrible dry lands? Let's see, uh, David Neal is doing the Arctic. Alistair Crawley is in the Carrier's Desert. <laughs> well, that's the important thing. If we're going to have a statue, we have to be in good standing with the um, museum. It's like in a Around the world with 80 days. I've not spent much time in the Arctic. The Arctic? Horrible dry lands? Oh, we got one vote for each. Does anyone want to be the tiebreaker? Otherwise, I'll just randomly pick one. It's kind of cool. We're coming here out of London. I need a clipper ship. That's where I'm from, right over here. Oh, I'm fingering it. Oh, you like that, America? I love you. <laughs> I like that mustache, too. Let's see why we can't customize our character a little more. I guess 
The Arctic? All right, we're going with the Arctic. After being too excited to sleep, I stored my equipment on the ship. There were still some arrangements to be made, so I spent my time on the deck, enjoying the cool breeze. We should have picked the donkey. When we were in that town, I should have picked the donkey. Nothing against Gehifos, but I should have taken the donkey. An old hunter approached me with a request. He had heard about my trek and regaled me with a about a vicious hyena named Snarl Snarfrattle. He despised the creature with all of his heart and wished it removed from the face of the earth. A worthwhile purse would await me if we were able to return his skin. Um, I gotta write that down, because otherwise I'm gonna forget. So we're gonna accept this guy's mission to try and murder the hyena. A hyena in the fucking Arctic? What? <laughs> How'd the hyena up in the Arctic? Yeah, we'll attack your Arctic hyena. So our mission... You can see there is kill Snarfrattle. He nodded gratefully and wished us luck on our hunt. I was delighted to witness the boarding of our ship had quite drawn. Or, I had, <laughs> I was delighted to witness the boarding of our ship had drawn quite the crowd. I was approached by several capable persons that were enterprising enough to sign up to my cause. Who did I want to recruit? So luckily, we now have somebody that wants to join us. Either Alexander Kettle, the sailor. He's really good at defense. He's got pretty good capacity. Uh, he's got a bonus for flares. I don't care about flares. An artist. He's superstitious. Uh, if, if we have... Um, what do you call it? The things you paint on canvases. He can paint on those and we can bring those back. But we don't have any of those. And that sounds stupid. Or Sam Tata, the Persian translator. Oh, wait, what's this he's good at? Indigenous diplomacy... You're not good at indigenous diplomacy, are you, Riyadh? I forgot you were a sexist. So, let's see. You're good at attacking. You're good at attacking. You're good at defense. Shit, we don't have anybody with... Well, I guess he has some perception. I kind of am leading towards Kettle, though. Kettle can carry a lot. He's tough. Is he the most loyal? Yeah, he's up there for loyal. So, we'll pick the Sailor. We could use an experienced seaman. Oh, dirty word! Like Alexander Kettle, and welcome to him to our party. I rejoiced as the vessel was prepared for the departure. Um, so let's see if there's any equipment we want to buy. A pistol? How much is that? 50? Oh, we don't have enough for it. Can I sell you my beans? Ah, oh, we don't. You could buy some dynamite. Dynamite's kind of fun. <laughs> Should we buy dynamite? I shouldn't have spent all my money on dynamite. <laughs> Alright, we can buy some dynamite. Oh, we ought to buy some torches, too. We might need some torches. Oh, we should buy some snowshoes. Because we might need those for... <laughs> I'm too busy. We need dynamite and guns. So, shouldn't we get snowshoes for walking on the snow? Can I just blow up the snow? Uh, so, let's get some snowshoes. A couple of torches. Some dynamite. I think that'd be good. What happens if I put the gun there? Yeah, that's way too much. Wait, could we get just the gun? No, nope, that's too much. I wish there was music here. Oh, well. Okay, we're going to get a couple torches. Some dynamite. I guess we'll just get one dynamite and some snowshoes. At long last, the ship was prepared to set sail. You can improve your animal ca carrying capacity, too. Well, we got one dynamite. That's, like, all we could afford. If we could have afforded more, hopefully we don't die. And I'm like, why did I give everything to the museum? Sailing, sailing. Ooh, what's up there? In the thick mist of the rainy morning, we arrived at our expedition area... The foreign landscape beaconed us to explore. We can also access ship storage if we want to. It puts something into storage. I don't think we're going to put anything into storage. What is this? Excuse me. Click on Oh, we can use that to see an area. Okay, we might use that later on. So we can see some villages here. 
We have no idea where that Arctic Hyena is. And you can see that's going to use one of our snowshoes going through that area. Ooh, there's something down here. And right here, this magnetic mountain, that'll affect the compass. So the compass will point to that if we're too close to it. Let's visit the station. When the pale man came out of the station, the dog sleds outside went quiet. For some queer reason, he asked me about tickets. We walked past a room filled with blankets. An arm was sticking out of one of them. It was badly burnt. I heard him mumble about a strange object he found in the ice. Apparently we need tickets? We can use a dog sled? Let's see what they have to trade, if anything. Can we get some free tickets? No. Can I give you a bean? Oh, sweet. If we give them some beans, we can get some tickets. I don't even know what these tickets are for. Oh, med kits would be nice, too. How much are these worth? Five? Can you give us a med kit and I give you some booze? Uh, what else can we get? Snowshoes? Okay, so we can get some... If we sell them a whiskey, we can get some first aid kits, some snowshoes, a ticket, and then we're going to use our barter ability from our barter dude. Deal! We found an agreeable solution for both parties. Did this man really come here to conduct business? So uh, we can use a ticket if we want to. What's the dog sled? I thought he was joking at first, but the man once again started to mutter about tickets. Apparently these tickets would buy me passage with this sled. Oh, we can travel to another station with this ticket? Let's do it. What the fuck is that? Okay, so we can visit this station. Okay, so we can use tickets to go between stations. We're going to go explore some. What is this? I discovered an abandoned campsite. I found torn tents. Then I started digging myself. Under the snow, I discovered the grisly remains. A group of natives torn to pieces by some animal. This was an ominous place. This area was marked heavily by animal tracks. Staying here would surely attract unwanted attention. Fuck it, we're going to search the area. We got dynamite. To our surprise, one of the rotten crates still held some loot. So we got some more whiskey. Some more ropes. That's excellent. Because that's not going to take up any extra spaces. As we departed, we had become aware that our presence had attracted ravenous wildlife. Oh, shit. That's like a polar bear. That not good. Let's see. How far can we get before we need to take a rest? I think that polar bear is following us. You know, we're going to have to rest for a day. We're going to set up a campsite. You know, oh, it's a wolf. We're going to attack this wolf. There's two of them, actually. We're going to use our dynamite. So it'll do damage six, group damage six, three. Does that mean it's going to hurt us, too? Let's find out. It did! Oh, shit. Oh, that was not good. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I got the dynamite. Boom! Oh, fuck. Uh, all right. There's a safer way to use dynamite. I think it's if you have some of these bonuses. Quick shot will be enough. Mistakes were made. Um, so we can take this stuff from the wolves. Technically, if we take this food here, our uh, chef can cook it. Um, he burned it. One charcoal meat. One charcoal meat. One charcoal meat. But if we click on these, we can eat them. Oh, now we can eat the beans. Somebody can get promoted. Let's promote our sailor. Oh, he's injured. Great. Um, Stop. No. Stop telling me about the bonuses. I'm trying to promote him. I'm just... Fine, I'll promote this guy. Oh, I think I did just by clicking on him. So we're going to enter our camp. We assembled our camp. Oh, the comforts of home were calling out to me. So we're going to rest to get our sanity up. We're probably not going to be the first ones back from this expedition. 
We decided it would be a good idea to stay here and allow everyone to rest. It was a beautiful night and everyone seemed to enjoy themselves. They should have the Aurora Borealis back there. We heard something rustle the bushes nearby. We were approached by natives painted in bright colors. Etienne gazed at the strangers with mistrust as he carefully reached for his weapon. That's our racist dude, right? Yeah. Let's invite the, the strangers to the camp. We invited them to join us. Now, Etienne, his loyalty went down because he is racist. He doesn't want the natives to hang out with us. So you can see his loyalty is now down too because he's mad. We invited them to join us. They gladly accepted and sat down, sharing stories by the warming fire. Etienne's abhorrence for the natives was rather blatant. He sat down far away from the campfire for the remainder of the parlay. Let's see if they have anything to trade. Some golden earrings. Some teeth. We might be able to get something for free because of our friend's haggling ability. Yeah, we'll get a free tooth. And the reason I want the tooth... Oh, man. How much would it take to get that? Oh, that's very expensive. Wh Ooh, a whiskey can get it, though. Might go for that. Yeah, let's get us some beautiful ear rings so we can be beautiful. It's a rave party. <laughs> Late night rave party under the Aurora Borealis. Oh, man. His, his, did his loyalty go down even more because we traded with these guys? Let's see if we can recruit one of them. After some negotiation, one of them was indeed willing to join our trek. We invited them to join us. They gladly accepted and sat down, sharing stories by the warming fire. Etienne's abhorrence for the natives was rather blatant. Damn it. Etienne does not like us now. He is angry. He is very angry because we have invited one of the natives to join our party. The natives stood up and thanked us for their hospitality, our hospitality, and headed into the darkness. So let's see, we picked... Up Gextahub. He's got shaman abilities. He's a local, so he may not follow us home and he's superstitious. <laughs> yeah, we use the dynamite mostly in killing ourselves. Um, we're going to rest overnight again because I think that also heals us. We decided it would be a good idea to stay here and allow everyone to rest. It was a warm and starry night. While we were sitting around the campfire, Alexander Kettle revealed two bottles of whiskey he had secreted away. I rather did not want to know where he had hidden them thus far. Oh, they were in his booty hole. I don't want to kick our chef out, though, because if we get food, he can cook it, and we can eat it, and it helps our morale. We gotta go to that dark, evil area, don't you think? Sleeping with a roof. Okay, we're gonna pack up the camp. We're ready to go. We got some real problems, though. Kettle is injured. You can see his injured thing. <laughs> Everybody is injured. Maybe we should have stayed one more night. We have too many Trek members? Is that possible? I have never seen that before. Um, what do I do? Um, we have too many trick. How do I get rid of somebody? Oh, I gotta go to dismiss. Oh, man. Do I take the risk? Do we keep the shaman and hope he stays with us? Do I get rid of Etienne because he's unloyal? Disloyal? <clears throat> Etienne is second level, though. I want to keep Tri Riyadh because he's been really good with uh, haggling. That's helped us out. And obviously, I can't get rid of our leader, Frederick. I could tell Gixta up to go. I like this guy, though. Well, we can eat mushrooms and get sanity, too. He's like, we can get high, bro. He might not come with us, though. You know, I think Etienne's the problem. His loyalty is zero. We're such a horrible person. <laughs> Etienne, I know I took you to the Arctic in the middle of nowhere. But, goodbye. I had to send Etienne away. Riyadh and Alexander attempted to change my opinion. You gotta be joking. Sorry, Alexander. I let him go. Now, unfortunately, our other two members, Riyadh and what's-her-face, uh, Riyadh and Alexander are not happy about that, so their loyalty is going to go down, too. Etienne never should have questioned us. 
Uh, what is this? In the wilderness, it was impossible to prevent an injury from becoming infected. Riyadh's wound has become to fester and secretly an astonish and secrete an astonishing degree of pus. Oh god, things are going bad. All right, Riyadh, I'm gonna use. We're gonna use one of our healing kits on Riyadh to try and cure his infection. We used the first aid kit to treat the injuries of Riyadh. He had more color than his cheeks, and we took care of his infected wound. Let's explore this portal. <laughs> yeah, things are going kind of rough. A mysterious gate stood before us. A light swirling at its center seemed to form some sort of portal. Center of the portal. When all was said and done, we risked all as we walked through the gate. A moment later, we stepped onto an alien landscape. It was aliens. So we're in some sort of alien dimension. Where do we even go? Are you good at fighting? Uh oh. Um. Let's just travel. I don't think we have any machetes, unfortunately. Ooh, can we get? Does that mushrooms mean anything? What's this? It's a shrine. Let's examine it. We arrive at a majestic structure, seemingly a holy shrine, to the inhabitants of the region. Some sort of alien shrine? All manner of plant life grew towards the sun. A circle of dried up blood has been drawn around the whole structure. I swear I heard the sound of rushing water below the earth. It was a stargate? It might have been. Let's enter the shrine. We carefully entered a well-preserved ceremonial chamber. If this place held any riches, I knew we would find them here. We found a stone altar that was covered in ancient writings. Um, so we're gonna steal this stuff. I mean, borrow it for science. I would not leave empty-handed! That was exactly what we came for. We grabbed what we could and hurried outside as enormous fountains of water burst through the ground and began to flood the surrounding area. We had to run like our lives depended on it. We could drown in a great lake forming around us. Uh-oh. Do we have to get back to the portal? Run! It's a flood! Ooh, let's examine this shrine. Oh, we can upgrade Kickstub. Okay, we'll upgrade you, sir. He can get ever higher on mushrooms. A shrine towered above us. Time had eroded what once had been a majestic site. What remained of a narrow staircase led to the only entrance. I swear I heard the sound of rushing water beneath our feet. So we can either leave here. We can try and climb without safety. You can see our dice. Those are the dice we get to roll. Those are based on our characters who have red dice. Um, or we can use a rope. We have like seven ropes. So let's use a rope. After securing everyone, we successfully scaled the towering shrine. We found a sacred altar room. If this place held any riches, we knew we would find them here. Our steps echoed as we approached the sacred altar. Alright, so we already have a temple pendulum. We don't need that. I want the golden golden owl head. Shit, what are we going to get rid of, though? Torches are cheap. I just need a torch. We'll get rid of torches. What a glorious day! The treasure was to be mine, Frederick! What's his name? Frederick? Courtney Sellas. Everyone will know my name when they build the statue. We grabbed what we could and hurried outside as enormous fountains of water burst through the ground and began to flood the surrounding area. Uh-oh. Our sanity is getting low. We can only run for so long before bad, bad things are going to happen. Uh-oh. Our sanity is two. This is not good. <laughs> we need to make camp, but if we make camp here, I fear we are going to drown. Um, whiskey will help. Let's drink some whiskey. Woohoo! Frederick's like party. Uh oh. Our um, our sailor is become an alcoholic though. He has a bad drinking habit and will lose loyalty if he doesn't drink. Ah, oh, god damn it. Uh, let's keep going. Oh, that's all the farther we can go without more booze. Or we could run north. I think we're going to have to run north. Oh, no, no, no! 
If we go any farther, okay, we can go one more before we get a sanity problem. Oh, that water is on us. Drink some more booze. Please don't else become an alcoholic. Alexander is more loyal now because he got more booze. Can we not go this way? It's a sulfur lake. Oh, no, we're in a dead end. Oh, no. Can we swim? This is not good. Oh, no. Please stop, water. Please stop. We're screwed. We're absolutely screwed now. I don't think we can go. We can't go through. Oh, sh we can't go anywhere. I didn't realize these were self for lakes. <laughs> um. Um. We're going to make camp. <laughs> We erected our camp. Oh, the comforts of home were calling out to me. Let's just rest here and hope we don't drown. We settled down and allowed everyone to rest. There was a tense mood as we sat by the campfire. After a long day of logging our findings, I commanded that a camping area be cleared. I wanted to have a bit of peace and quiet and comfort for a change. <laughs> don't worry, men. Let's just camp. What about the giant flood? I'm camping. Camping. Gitak uh, called me out calmly. He claimed I was destroying this region. <laughs> Gextum is like, you white people are destroying this area. I lost my temper, you fool. That's for science. You know nothing, you ingrate moron. I am making it better so I can put these in a museum in England. Uncultured swine, I swear. I lost my temper and shouted him down. I'd watch him closely from now on. Come on, water yourself. Wear yourself yourself out. Sleeping with the roof over one set. We're just going to keep resting here and hope we don't drown. I instructed the trek to halt to catch our breath. It was a warm and starry night. I laid awake and listening to the chaotic wildlife surrounding me. Because they're probably drowning. You probably hear these weird space monsters and dinosaurs drowning in the floods we've created. It had me wondering if there was a way to foresee the kinds of dangers that awaited me when entering the Forsaken Temples in this land. Maybe if I paid special attention to each temporal structural composition, I could gain more knowledge. After we ruin everything... Uh, we're gonna hack up camp, I guess. Fuck it, we're gonna rest one last night. <laughs> this might be the last night we live. Oh, I was instruct. Oh, let's see. I instructed the trek to halt. While Gextob did ritualistic dance to bless our next day, he incidentally discovered precious mushrooms that he shared with me. Getting high on mushrooms. Excellent. We are so screwed right now. <laughs> let's pack up our camp. We are so beyond fucked. <laughs> oh god, this is not good. Oh, we're overburdened? I don't even care right now. Oh no, 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 no. We're screwed. We can't go anywhere. This is the end. I think the end of our adventures. We can wait a day and not do anything. The water caught up with me and I was washed away. Valuable items were lost. Not our campsite. That's our most valuable thing. Oh, we just lost our most valuable item. We survived, though. My vision became blurry. I rubbed my eyes. And when I looked up again, I was back where I originally stepped into the terrible portal. That campsite was the best thing we had. Let's eat some mushrooms to celebrate. We set up camp to comfortably consume mushrooms. Oh, everybody's healthy. I guess we don't need them. Shit. Because now we're in trouble. Because when we could camp, we could get our sanity up rather easily. But without a campsite, that's not possible. Um, let us go up to here. Let's visit the station and see if we can rest here. We do have a ticket so we can rest. The warm pads were a welcome reprieve from the cold. The pale man kept watching me in my sleep. 
He's like, sleep, white man, sleep. I dream, dreamt of strange objects crashing from the sky. In the morning, the man looked as if he had aged 10 years. We gotta go up and see whatever this is. The mountain face sculpture. Oh, that's it? I thought there'd be more to it. All right, we're gonna have to... Where do we have to go? Go down there. Let's go visit the station again. I think we need some more tickets. Let's trade with them. Give me your tickets. Take a whiskey. Wait, is there a smaller group? Okay, give me that. Let's, and give me my beans back. And then let's use a dog sled to travel to the other station. Oh shit, let's push it, pointing at that magnetic mountain. And then let's see if we can rest here, because we do have um, a ticket. The warm beds will welcome reprieve. This pale man stared us, at us as we sleep, t slept too. We're going to rest here a couple days. We got a bunch of tickets. Might as well use them. I dreamt the sleeper awakened from the ice sarcophagus, but otherwise it was an uneventful night. In the morning, the man was cordial and prepared breakfast. Let's rest one more time. These guys are weird. I think that the compass is pointing at that, though. It's not going to help us. Ooh, what is this? I approached an abandoned campsite. I found pages in the snow. Then I started digging myself. Under the snow cover, I found the grizzly remains. Danish explorers. Something forced them to stay here for a longer time. It proved to be too long. It was unbelievable how well preserved the bodies were thanks to the ice. This area was marked by heavy animal tracks. Let's see if we can find anything good. Oh, we found some loot. We found a bunch of beans. And a bunch of uh, snowshoes, hopefully not with feet in them. As we departed, we became aware that our presence attracted hungry wildlife. Well, we don't have a cook anymore to help us. Oh, which way do we go? Is that pointing as the magnetic mountain? This is the edge of the map. Oh, man, we might be so fucked. <laughs> yeah, this point of the magnetic mountain is going like that. Let's go over here. Oh, thank God. That's exactly what we needed. That's the way out. Before we leave, though... Ugh. I wanted to fight one of these things. Do we dare? Let's see. Let's drink some whiskey. That's going to make Alexander more loyal. Stupid animals keep running away. We're going to leave. The goal was presented to us in the form of a pyramid made of gold. It really sucks we lost our camp stuff. After weeks of traveling, great joy overcame me. I knew that the name Frederick Courtney Sellers would be synonymous with victory. I congratulated Gexub, but instead of excitement, I saw regret. He would not follow me into the civilized world. Come on, Gixub. We left some man to freeze to death, our cook, in exchange for you. Please stay with us, so we're going to try and convince him. And we did. All my stories about the adventures of the civilized world had an effect on Gixub. And he agreed to come back with us. Hicks, history books, here I come. It's got to be worth it after all. We left a man to freeze to death. <laughs> and the Arctic was a harsh place. We were the first one back, so we get a speed bonus. I did not know if we were going to make it back. So we'll finish our expedition. We almost died. Thank you. I can smell alcohol from here. Shut up. Just because we're alcoholics now. If you saw the things we saw, I wish I was you. I don't think you do. Let's see if we can get Bullet Hoarder. No idea how, but a character with this perk finds a bullet somewhere every couple of days. 
That's actually a kind of good perk. Lone survivors survive a little bit longer when all alone. We don't want to be alone. Jungle explorer reduce mo movement costs in this thick jungle. We're gonna go with bullet hoarder. Bullets are uh, they're like an extra die or something you can use in combat. I would think after this mission, if I worked for Frederick here, I'd be like, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. So we're still number one, and we've got a lot of things to sell. So we got these teeth. They're worth more than the fame, so we're going to sell them. Oh, man, those golden earrings. We need some money, though. We can sell these. We're going to have to start selling stuff. So let's sell these earrings. This is worth a ton of fame. We'll gift this to the uh, museum. Let's sell these pelts. I think maybe we'll sell this one and gift the other one. Yeah, because that one's worth a lot more fame. So there's our fame. We're at a thousand. And we have $145. We're well ahead of Crowley and Dion Fortune. And Alexandra is way back here. I don't know, maybe she found some arrowheads in her backyard. <laughs> I'm an explorer too! Is wait, 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 is what because everybody gets killed off? Um, so our next, our next, our third expedition, and we're only been through two expeditions. This is why it's hard to beat the game. We can go to the Merciless Desert. I have never beat the game and finished first. I've beaten the game once and I've finished second. The Desperate Drylands. Or the Sorrowful Jungo, Jungle. Apparently that has another alien portal. That must be what that one thing is there. Man, the alien portal was bad news last time we went. Don't you want to travel with Fred? Like, you probably die. I'm going to be back in a quick second. I'm just going to top off my drink. So what do you think? Should we go to the Sorrowful Jungle, the Desperate Drylands, or the Merciless Desert? Merciless Desert seems like a bad idea. I think we should do the Jungle or the Drylands. The Jungle does have another portal. I'll be back in just a moment. I wonder if I made a mistake not keeping the chef. I mean, it's nice not to have his racistness around. Yeah, I, I feel, let's go explore the pubs of London. Yeah, I, I think jungle might work. Oh, we got to get some machetes. If We can get some machetes. That's not a big deal. The desert wouldn't be bad. Let's try the jungle. Hopefully these aren't famous last words. After a good night's rest, I made haste and arrived at the docks. The captain had yet to arrive, so I s saw if there was anything I could do. Soon after my arrival, the hunter approached me. He was eager to see evidence of Snarfraddle's death. We did not kill the hyena in the woods that he wanted us to kill. Or in the Arctic. I totally forgot about that, to be honest, because we almost fucking died. <laughs> so, sorry, dude. We lost some fame because of that. We lost a lot of fame. I did not have the pelt for him. The hunter was disappointed at my decision and left soon after. The museum curator greeted me this morning. He was a collector of sorts and promised to compensate me favorably for any instruments that we retrieved. Okay. Hopefully that's not a bad idea. The trader was heartened by my acceptance of his request. He wished us luck as a, and a safe journey. As I was the one of the most, or as I was one of the most famous explorers, stories of my exploits had lured all manner of intrigued personalities. I was approached by several capable persons that were curious to find out more about the strange lands we were headed to. Who did I want to recruit? So I think we might lose somebody if we recruit someone. I want to keep the shaman. 
I don't really care if we keep Alexander, because he's an alcoholic, and that could come back to haunt us. Uh, Riyadh has done well. Who do we have? Sister Paulina? Uh, you are a racist. I don't think we want any more racists. A different soldier. A soldier? But you are also an alcoholic. You, you are better at combat. What's our sailor? He's good at defense. I think we're just going to stay with our crew that we got. I rejoiced as our ship was ready to leave harbor. Let's see if we can purchase a new tent. Oh, there's no tents. Ass. Let's purchase some machetes. We'll need those. Crap. And let's purchase some torches. We may need those. Oh, yeah, let's get some whiskey. That's a good point, too. We definitely need whiskey now. <laughs> You can get tents somewhere. Uh, can we improve our animal? A master crafter of saddles offered to improve the carrying capacity of our animals. Her high quality of work demanded a high price. Okay, so if we spend 50 bucks, we can get a little more carrying capacity, which you'll see down here. We'll do that. We can carry one extra thing on the donkey. Sir, what's the donkey's name? Sir Kettle! That'd be awesome if he's an actual sir before all the rest of us. I was more than a little pleased to invest in improving Sir Kettle's capacity. A little while later, his pack saddle was improved and could carry an additional crate. The saddle trader told me I was her favorite customer and assured the quality of the pack saddle. Just in time, our ship primed, or was primed to sally forth. I guess we'll set sail. Oh man, this is going to be rough without our tent. We're going to have to be a lot more cautious. The tent, I think, is arguably the best item in the game. The journey across the ocean brought many wondrous sightings of marine life before we finally reached the shore of our expedition area. I knew this place held something special for us. Uh, let's get some water, and then let's roll out. Uh, what is that? Oh, he wants some instruments. That's what the uh, museum curator wanted. So how do we... I guess we'll just head up north. Ooh, it's a trader. A trading caravan had pitched up camp here. The colorfully dressed trader had a lot of useful goods on offer collection of lost and founds. He hesitated before presenting us with the selection of his wares. We could not help but think he was hiding something from us. We're supposed to be better at black market shit. And there's not been any good black market stuff. And you don't have any instruments. Uh, give us some beans for free. Using our Hegel skill. Oh, there's something way up there. We've got to be a little careful how far we go out of our way. In fact, we're going to head more or less straight towards where the pyramids or the compass is pointing. Since we don't have as much time to dick around as we used to have. Ooh, a cave. Let's explore. This is why we want torches. We approach a cave. The entrance led into the darkness of unknown depth. We required a torch to explore its secrets. So we're going to use the uh, torch. We could just use the dice and hope we get lucky, but something bad could happen if we fail. Light a torch and explore. We lit a torch and descended into darkness. We discovered a remarkable underground body of water. Sexy body. The water seemed rich with algae, sustaining the growth of mushrooms with a vibrant hue. If we were to invest a little time, we would surely be able to collect some of them. <laughs> it might be a five-finger discount the Hegel skill. That is very possible. Let me Hegel with you, yoink. Gotta go. Uh, we're good on water, so let's collect some mushrooms. After spending a while in the cave, we had collected some seemingly digestible mushrooms. I don't remember what the mushrooms do, to be honest. But we have a shaman that'll help us with that. And so we got a free bullet, because that's one of our perks now, where... Um, our dude, Duder McGee, finds bullets. How are we going to... Oh, we got to go all the way around there? How many machetes do we have? Five? 
So we're gonna have to use our machetes to cut through the jungle here. Oh, it's a portal! Okay, before we use this portal, I gotta get rid of some of this shit. We got too much stuff. Oh, why did I... Well, we can just get rid of these. Because we're never probably going to an Arctic area again. Watch us do that. I should have left these on the boat. I feel like an idiot. A mysterious gate stood before us. A stargate. SG-1. Let's enter it. When all was said and done, we risked all we had as we walked through the arch. This area is much smaller. There seem to be only, like, two things. Can we eat some beans? There we go. Get that sanity up. Let's eat some mush... Oh, no. Mushrooms are for individuals. Okay, this mushroom helps us see farther. This one heals. Let's make, uh... Let's make Riyad go up a level. So he'd be better at his five-finger discount stealing. I mean, borrowing from people. Oh, which one do we go for? Let's go for this one. Uh-oh. Alexander's loyalty is going down because he's an alcoholic and he's not drinking booze. Oh, we got another bullet. Excellent. Let's explore. After a long day of traveling, we arrived at a sacred temple that was built right into the face of the mountain. Is it Petra? We stood in awe of the enormous structure. A large opening led inside. Let's go. We arrived at the inner sanctuary of the temple. A golden altar stood in the center. There was a golden goblet containing a red liquid standing in the center of the altar. Intuition told me that one of our numbers should drink from it. I do not know what this does. Uh, I hope this isn't really, really bad. Do we give it to Riyad, our, like, highest level guy? I'm not going to give it to Alexander because he's an alcoholic. We might lose him sooner or later. Or do we give it to the shaman? <laughs> I like how our guy Fred is not going to drink from it. I found this mysterious drink. One of you will drink it. Oh, yeah, it's probably Ultra Blood, too. I didn't even thought about that. Riyad, drink it. I asked Riyad to drink... From the mysterious goblet. He protested initially, but then took a few long sips until the chalice was empty. No, sir, I don't want to drink it. You will drink it or I will give you a thrashing. As he drank from the chalice, his skin began to harden and darken. Soon after, it seemed as if his skin was now much harder and more resistant to harm. He has leather skin. His health went up. Oh, excellent. It's too bad we couldn't have had our main character drink that. As we emerged from the temple, a huge stone lowered me behind us and sealed the portal. There was no way back inside. Riyadh's like, the spirits are guiding us away from this place. You're not spiritual, dude. You just don't like that we made, we made you drink blood. So let's have some whiskey to celebrate. That'll make Alexander happier. The worst thing is everybody can become alcoholics in time if we keep that up. And then let's go find out what this other thing is. Hopefully we can stay in this land long enough. My vision became blurry. I rubbed my eyes. And I looked up again... I was back where I originally stepped into that terrible portal. It's too bad we didn't get that before we washed away in the previous world we were in. So let's eat some more beans. This is where I wish we had our campsite, because then we would just camp for a bunch of days. Can we not eat any more beans? Uh, let's use our magic Tome of the Eagle Scout to scout out ahead. I th don't know what that is. That might be the way out. Let's go check out this thing. We approached a cave. A rocky maw seemed to lead deep into the mountain. We required a torch to uncover its mysteries. We lit a torch and descended into the darkness. We discovered a remarkable underground body of water. You know what I just realized? If we don't get a musical instrument, our fame's going to go down. Because we promised uh, the museum curator we would get one. So let's collect these mushrooms. Ever since we got that one shaman, dude, we're all about, like, dude, I need all the mushrooms I can get. Let's eat some more beans. Hopefully these guys have some instruments we can trade for. 
We arrive at a native village. Its inhabitants invoke respect due to being a clan of well-trained warriors. I could tell they were performing some kind of ceremony. While the team unpacked our equipment, I observed the rites with interest. All right, so we don't want to piss them off because they are a native of, or a village of warriors. A precious looking stone idol was positioned front and center of the village. The villagers seemed to be very happy about our appearance and welcomed us with open arms. The natives seemed to have heard pleasant things about us. The natives observed us with intrigue. They were kind and offered us what they could. Let's see if we can trade with them. Oh, they don't have any... Wait, is that a musical? A horn flute! Yes! Okay, somebody... I gotta remember, don't sell these all. Hey, Brad, how you doing? I gotta remember, keep a horn. Hopefully that'll make... Be count as the instrument the dude wants. So we'll buy some horn flutes. Actually, we probably just need one. And some gems. Because the gems are worth like 30. We can sell those for a profit back home. Is there anything else we want to trade them? Probably not. These mini puppets are creepy. They can take away any fears before sleep. I'll pass on that. We're good. I settled on trade with the natives. Let's rest here if we can. I told the team to unpack and prepare for that. That's nice. They're going to let us stay here. This night, the villagers held some kind of ceremony and politely offered us hollow fruits filled with alcoholic beverage. We're going to drink them because hopefully they'll help our alcoholic be happier. Oh, no. Now Riyadh's an alcoholic, too. I'm glad to hear you do it all right, Brad. We accepted their offer and passed around the beverage. It tastes bitter, and we stayed up long into the night, drinking and laughing with the villagers. Riyadh Teropor had too much of the beverage before he fell asleep and slept with a smile on his face. We are a traveling group of alcoholics. Now, we could try and steal the idol. I think we're going to be polite to them. They were nice to us. As much fun as it might be to try and steal it, we're going to... Why did I carry snowshoes with us? I should have left all that shit on the ship. We're just going to sleep. I got a splendid night's rest. The following morning, I woke to a face of, uh, to face a crowd of natives. It seems my expressive yawns concerned them. Our extended presence was perceived well by the natives. They remained courteous and offered us more help. We could actually sleep another night, probably. This night, the villagers held a ritual ceremony. They offered us a bowl of cooked meat that had a disgusting smell to it. Supposedly, it would taste like chicken. Gextub felt a bit uneasy and informed us that it was not unlikely that the meat was human flesh. We will pass on this. We politely refused to eat from the bowl. And we're going to sleep. I slept in great comfort and safety the following... I'm glad we didn't try and steal their idol if they kill people and eat them. <laughs> the following morning, I awoke to the sound of the village already bustling with activity. There was certainly a delicate balance between peaceful communication and offending these particular night natives. A girl placed some food by the idol. We're going to leave. I told the man to peck up. Next up, stayed behind for a while as he had more business to attend to with the villagers. However, he caught up with the trek the very... That very day. Uh-oh. Get tech sub, you did not steal their idol, did you? And the natives stared at me distrustfully as I departed their village. The subsequent day, I had the uncomfortable feeling of being watched. You did not, I hope he did not steal. Oh my god, dude, you better not have stolen. Run, just in case he stole their idol. Run. Uh oh, there's the tiger, we want to avoid that. Oh, it's a stone circle! Oh shit, where the fuck's the pyramid then? Centered the stone circle. We came across a stone circle that seemed to be man-made. There were inscriptions etched into each rock. Perhaps they formed a sort of map. Getek's Ub seemed visibly upset at the idea of exploring this site and warned us about disturbing it. Uh, we could reveal campsites. That would be nice for sleeping. Settlements... Doesn't really matter. Either ruins or camp points. Let's see how much food do we have. We got beans. Let's let's reveal any ruins. Get tech sub made sure to voice his concern to me. I was not sure how long it would take for him to come to terms with my decision. A group of native warriors appeared as if by magic. They 
must have been following me since I left their village. Their leader was clearly furious about my actions, demanded a pay tribute as compensation. Well, what can we pay? We endeavored to make peace. Okay, he talked them down with Hagelin. Can we give you a mushroom? We'll give him some shrooms to get high on. We are able to come to an agreement with the warriors. They disappeared to, into the bushes. Alright, so let's see. That's probably... Let's see, there's a shrine, there's a shrine. We missed that shrine. I'm not going to worry about that one. I got too much shit. I screwed up and I forgot to leave these things on the boat. If we go north, though, we're going to run into that stupid tiger. Is that Shere Khan? Oh, wait, we can upgrade somebody, too. Let's upgrade our... Let's upgrade our sailor. Oh, there are two tigers here. Can we use the bullets? So, the bullets, you can see, we can use as um, an additional die. If you put them together, look, it's a triple attack. I don't think they have quadruple attacks. Oh, man, these tigers are powerful. Oh, we can poison the enemy? Okay, we're going to poison the enemy. And then we're going to roll these and see what else we can get yet. Did these end up being anything? Nope. I guess we just have to do the kick. Oh man, this might be bad. <laughs> See how bad the tigers fuck us up. These ain't no Detroit tigers. We weathered that round. See. We can put three shield points up there. That might not be bad. So we're definitely going to need some shield. Let's see, we'll put some shield up. That's another shield and some heal. Oh, it's like their love. We love killing people who are different than us. Oh, I should have waited to get that shield one. All right, so we got five shield right here, and the tiger's going to go. Oh, man, they fucked us up. <laughs> Gektuk Sub is in deep, deep trouble. So we only need one to kill this guy. Uh, we'll use that. We'll do a shield and some healing. We definitely, definitely need healing there. We'll use that. That'll give us some more shield and some damage. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get anything there. I don't even know if we're going to get much out of this. Oh, <laughs> Leave my sailor alone, bro. No wonder why Alexander likes to drink. Yeah, why don't we poison him? Kind of would like a shield if we could get one. Oh, we can stun him. That's excellent. Then he's not going to do any damage to us. Quick shot him. Then put up a shield. The shield's not really going to matter at that point. I think we might win this thing. Got a little bit of shield going on. A quick shot. Oh shit. Fuck. I should have saved that thing. I wanted to keep the, uh, that's what we want, is the magic thing right there. That'll heal us up. It's nice that we have a magic man.
Oh, and he didn't get through the shield. But we do have people who are bleeding, apparently. <laughs> That's not good. Oh, yeah, come on. Get everybody up to magic health. Did we finish him off? Yes, yeah, suck it. We, dep we, uh, we deprive the remains of anything useful. Uh, let's get rid of our torch. Let's see, that's 30. Oh, that's 40 for two of those. What else can we get rid of? We can get rid of the water. Take all the teeth. Oh, we have room for one more. If we still had a chef, I would take the raw meat. But we don't have a chef because he left, so... How happy. You're not very loyal. That was a pretty successful fight, though. Oh, the compass is... Where's the compass pointing? Compass is all over the place. I guess we'll head up towards this shrine. It's a giant tree? Hmm. Can't do anything there. Why don't we have some beans? Some whiskey? The perfect ingredient for much merrymaking. Hmm, yes. Hmm. Thoughts are around. We're kind of running out of room to pick stuff up, honestly. At this point, maybe we should just try and make a beeline trying to figure out how to get out of here. Uh, what is the best way out? Kind of want to avoid that animal. Oh, shit. Um... I almost fucked everything up. Can we get there on that? Because I think that's a campsite right there. So let us explore. The waterfall was something to behold. It was an awe-inspiring sight. Nature effortlessly demonstrated her elegance as, as, uh, and might as one. Let's rest overnight here. Hopefully nobody leaves us. We prepared camp and allowed everyone to rest. One could cut the tension with a butter knife as we sat by the campfire. I was returning from a small scouting trip when I heard some laughter at the camp. Curious. I listened to them and noticed to my dismay that Gexacub was making just at my expense. The group immediately hushed when they noticed me, but I feared my authority was already tarnished. I don't know what to do. If we chastise Gexacub, where is he? He might leave. His loyalty is low. But if we don't... Isn't that going to hurt our standings? Won't they all disrespect us? I think if we're going to play the character, I think our character would be like, Gexter Hub, you must know your place. I decided the situation was already stressful enough and did not want to make much noise over it. Oh, I hit the wrong thing. I hit the wrong thing <laughs> over such a comparatively minor event. Nevertheless, I observed that Riyadh shook his head disapprovingly. I wondered if he would think less of me now as the leader of the group. That worked out. So Riyadh didn't like that we didn't do anything. But that's okay. Because we can make him happier with alcohol. I accidentally made the right choice, letting it slide. After days of rest, we still enjoyed the sparkling effect of the water. F falling water. This place buoyed my soul. Shit, we're going to rest one more night. Because we only have one thing of beans left and one thing of whiskey. We decided it would be a good idea to stay here to catch our breath. The mood was buoyant as I ordered wood in my pants to be gathered for a fire. As usual, I walked the area of the camp to ensure that no poisonous animals were in sight. While doing so, I wondered if I would be able to anticipate the manner of location by its surrounding terrain. For example, it seemed that villages were always close to water. Interesting. All right, we're going to roll out of here. Let's see. Dion Fortune is getting close to getting to where she's going. Shit, that's a magnetic mountain we've been going right towards. Dick McDickles. You can see it affects the compass. Oh, shit. Tiger. No, we're going to go right through the jungle here.
Let us explore this area. Why is your loyalty going down? We entered an old campsite where uh, there were debris of what seemed to be a failed expedition from long before we had stepped foot in this land. The skeletal remains of what must have been a German explorer um, with a shattered ribcage. How do we know he's German? They must have quarreled over loot. This area was marked heavily by animal tracks. We're going to search this area. A certain there were riches to be found. We spread out and searched the area. We are delighted to see that one of the corpses was still clinging to valuable equipment. Please be a tent. We have a treasure map and dynamite. Um, let's take the dynamite. I don't think we have room for all of those. We departed and became aware that our presence had attracted ravenous wildlife. I think we're going to... Okay, we got too much shit. We're going to get rid of the treasure map because we're not going to stay here. We still have too much stuff. Um, fuck it. Let's get rid of these golden tickets. We're still overburdened? Let's eat some beans. Oh, man. I hope that is not right. I hope the pyramid isn't way down here somewhere. It shouldn't be because I think this is the edge of the map down here. Uh, let's try and escape these things. Oh, fuck. You know what? We better attack the hyena. It is right next to us. We don't want it to get the jump on us. Let's use some dynamite. I think dynamite with a shield. Dynamite with perception? Okay, yeah, that is what protects us. So that'll do four damage to all of them. That's the mistake we made last time. The guy's like, I just lit it and threw it. Hey, maybe you should look where you throw it. Oh, yeah, I could do that. Boom. There goes one hyena. There goes another hyena. We got some shield going. Uh, let's put up... Will that help it? No. Let's put up another shield. Damn, we just wrecked these things. Yeah, we freed them the fuck out of them. Uh, let's see, we'll take these. Those hides aren't worth a lot. They're not worth picking up. It's got a ton of teeth, though. Oh, man, I hope this is pointing towards that magnetic mountain there. Lost in the jungle, trying to find our way out. Ah, oh, shit. Our sanity is going down. We're in trouble. Let's drink some whiskey. That's going to make people happy. We're out of food, though. Blue mushroom will help us see farther. Oh, let's just hope this is the way out. Please be the way out. Yes! Oh, thank God. <laughs> that could have been really bad. The exotic landscape complemented the extraordinary golden pyramid, the sweet smell of achievement. If danger were eliminated, where would the fun come from, friends? They're like, I've seen horrible, horrible things. After such an endeavor, tremendous relief overcame me. I knew the name Frederick Courtney Sellis would be synonymous with victory. Glorious. Hopefully we were the first one out of our region. We were not. Oh, yeah, yeah, we were. We got the speed bonus. We're doing outstanding. I'll be back in just a moment, and then we'll see how we are rated compared to everyone else.
Did I just see one of our guys doing a hiccup because he's drunk? <laughs> Let's see. So we can get Strong Mine. Our max sanity goes up by 20. That might be worth getting. Especially now that we don't have a tent that we can use anytime we want. You inspire me. Navigator increases the gained compass accuracy when uncovering fields. Protector receives an additional defined style. We're going to do more max sanity. Because we've been lucky that we've not really gone all the way out on sanity. When your sanity goes all the way down, people just start leaving or killing each other or eating each other. Crawley, how dare you! This poor lady, she's got no chance. Hey, we're still in the lead! Ever so slightly. Look at all these teeth we ripped out of animals and brought back with us. Let us uh, sell these jewels we brought. We're going to sell these tiger hides. We're going to sell all these teeth. Wait, didn't we bring anything else back? Uh oh. I thought we brought more back. That's it? We didn't bring any artifacts back? We brought that flute back, though, for the, um, for the museum curator. That should help us with fame, so. So let's see. Expedition number four The Unseen Drylands, which has a portal, or the Unforgiving Desert of Australia. Yeah, we brought snowshoes back. We got rid of the tickets, though. We will probably never end up in the Arctic again. Uh, probably... Hmm, does anyone have a preference? There is a portal here. This is where it starts to get more difficult. Australia? Okay, we'll go down under. Early that morning, I made haste and arrived at the docks. The crew had preparations left to do, so I spent my time on the deck enjoying the cool breeze. The collector was eager to see what instruments we'd brought back with us. We brought you a flute, dude. Just one. I sold him a horn flute. The collector was eager to look upon which instruments... That's all. So we got some money. The collector seemed delighted with what we had sold him. Together with his newly purchased goods, he moved on from the harbor in high spirits. A merchant politely asked for my attention. He asked us to obtain a mysterious idol that was to be located in a village in the area in our upcoming expedition. He guaranteed to reward us handsomely if we're able to return with it. I don't know if we should be stealing... Should we stealing idols from natives? Like, I might actually say no on this one. Because, like, that one village we went into... Like, if we would have stolen that, I think they would have murdered us. <laughs> and they were so nice to us. So I might tell this guy no. I refuse to acquire the idol. What was he thinking? Are we some kind of delivery service? Hmm... As I was one of the most famous explorers, stories of my exploits had lured all manner of intrigued personalities. Many new recruits showed up, curious to find out more about the strange lands we were headed to. Who did I want to recruit? So right now we have Riyadh, who's level 3 and happy. We're going to keep him, even though he's an alcoholic and a sexist. Uh, that's our guy, Frederick. Um, I like Gixtahub. I like him a lot. We can get an artist... We can get a cook. Cooks are nice. What are you good at, bro? You're a mountain guy. I think we're going to stay with the crew we got. I like the crew we got. At long last, our vessel was primed to put out to sea. Let's uh, see what equipment we can purchase. Get a binoculars. That increases the view distance. We already have mushrooms for that. I don't think we were... Wait, where are we going? I forgot where we're, we're going to Australia, right? We haven't even used any shovels yet. I could have gotten rid of those. We probably don't need machetes if we're going to Australia. We do need whiskey, don't we? We definitely need whiskey. Uh, let's get some chocolate, too. Hopefully that'll be enough. Oh, and let's get a couple torches. Not just one torch. There we go. 
I wish they had music through all of this. And then let's see if we can improve our animal. A master crafter settles offered to improve the carrying capacity of your animals. That's why I sold the one torch to get us at 100. Her high quality work demanded a high price. We're going to increase the capacity for Sir Kettle, our donkey. So we have more room to carry things. I would surely pay some extra coin to increase the capacity of the good Sir Kettle. After some tinkering, his pack settle was upgraded and could carry an additional crate. The settle trader smiled at the finished piece and told me she was more than happy to offer her services again. Riyadh is probably like a woman making saddles? Psh. <laughs> Let's set sail. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we can fight kangaroos out here. We gotta get some more stuff for the museum, though. We didn't come back with anything for the museum last time. Though I guess the important thing is that we came back. After weeks of nasty food and seasickness, we arrived at our expedition. I was curious to discover what adventures were waiting for us here. So let's get some water, just in case we need it. And then we're gonna access ship storage and do what I should have done before. We're going to put our snowshoes in there, and I think that's it. We'll, we'll take everything else with us. Because we definitely didn't need those before. <laughs> and luckily, it didn't hurt us too much last time, but we definitely didn't need those or the tickets. Let's begin the expedition. There's something down there. The compass is way off. Oh, you can zoom out. I didn't realize that. So we're probably going to have to go south. Guess we'll just... Oh, shit. We're going to get some more water. The reason I do this, see these things that look like bombs? That means it's a dry area and we need water in those areas. So that's why we brought a bunch of water with us. Ooh, a stone circle. Let's enter. We came across a stone formation that seemed to be man-made. There were inscriptions etched into each rock. Perhaps they formed a manner of map. Gextahub seemed visibly upset. He's spiritual. I think that's he's superstitious. That's why he doesn't want us to mess with this. We want to reveal. Let's reveal the ruins. Get over it, Gextahub. He might leave us now because he's going to get mad that we're violating these sacred things. He's scared of ghosts. Haunting him. Gextahub made sure to voice his concerns to me. I was not sure how long it would take for him to come to terms with my decision. Get over it. Interesting. So let's go over here. Oh, he can upgrade too. Let's upgrade him. Today our trek arrived at an ancient temple located on a mountain face. This was seemingly a sacred place for the people living in these lands. A large opening led inside. Before us lay some sort of ceremonial chamber. A massive platform was located in the center. There was a decorative chalice containing a strange liquid. Standing in the center of the altar, intuition told me one of our numbers should drink from it. I, I don't know how travel insurance would work with that. See, Riyadh loves us. Alexander likes us. Gextahub actually likes us pretty well, too. Why don't we have... Let's have Alexander drink it. I asked, Al I asked Alexander to drink from the seemingly sacred chalice. He did not protest, for this was his moment, so he downed the whole liquid. Is it that or because he's an alcoholic? He's like, that might be booze. Don't mind if I do. As he drank from the chalice, I could have sworn I saw a ray of light coming down from the ceiling, suffusing him with a wonderful, almost hollowed aura. Some form of holy symbol had appeared on his forehead. Receiving a strong standing bonus as this person was hollowed by the pagan gods. What? Our drunken sailor is beloved by the gods, now pagan gods? I guess we have to be nice to him. We left a huge, as we left, a huge stone lowered behind us and sealed the portal. There was no way back inside. Uh, let's roll over here. We gotta steal some shit. We entered an old campsite. There were debris of what seemed to be a failed expedition from long before we stepped foot in this land. It's Saint Drunky the Sailor. A few mortal remains were long rotten. On the upside, one last competitor. The area was marked heavily by animal tracks. I had to keep moving or end up at someone's dinner. Let's search this area. Let's 
My instinct said we would find something of value here. We spread out and searched the area. To our surprise, one of the rotten crates still held some valuable loot. Well, we'll take the extra torches and chocolate. As we departed, we noticed our presence had attracted hungry wildlife. You can have my chocolate, hyena. Fuck it, we're going to attack them. Let's try and use our last dynamite. Oh, that's going to take group damage, though. What did we need? We needed perception. I want to save that. I want to save these. I want to save the shield. Okay, that's what we needed. The rest of these we'll be able to put into things. Wait, no, that's not what we needed. Because that's going to give us four group damage. Oh, fuck it. That's just going to work. <laughs> oh, no, I should have done it in a different order. Oh, I thought I was going to have time to heal. We blew them up with a giant explosion. Uh, let's take all the teeth. We'll probably... Um, oh, God, everybody's injured now. <laughs> Everybody's injured now. <laughs> oh, shit. What's that blue line? There must be some nice animal down there. <laughs> hey, some guy, how are you doing? Uh, oops. Because we have the other things that will uh, allow us to um, heal. Ooh, and a trader, good deal. Maybe they'll have some health kits. A trading caravan had pitched up camp here. The mysteriously dressed trader had a lot of valuable goods on offer. Most of them seemed to be the remains of other failed expeditions. He's got a native trinket. We can give that to somebody to make them more loyal. He's got beans. Drums are worth something. Probably get rid of some of this water. We got a lot of water going on. Oh, wait, we got mushrooms we can eat, too. Oh, they want water here because it's a dry area. Yeah, this is a very cool game. Um, What do we want? The drums would be kind of cool. I'm not really worried about machetes. Beans might be nice. Oops, I didn't mean to take all of them. Oh, we're just one short. Can I give you one? Or maybe they didn't want the water. What else would we have to give them? I could give them a tooth. Yeah, we'll take some beans. There we go. So we're overburdened, but that's all right. Uh, first of all, who's unhappy? You are. We'll give the gold, the trinket. We had some rough days recently, but today was a good day. I ordered the team to pause momentarily and consider to present a trinket. So let us give that to... You'll get happier with booze. Let us give that to Gex to Hub. I award you a native trinket for good loyalty. As an impromptu ceremony, I presented the trinket to Gextahub. Afterwards, we embraced each other in friendship, and I emphasized the importance of his contribution to the expedition. He put it immediately around his neck and carried it with pride. Excellent. Uh, let's eat some... Are we still injured? You're injured. You're injured. The little blood sign shows it. Oh, everybody is. Let's eat some mushrooms. <laughs> let's have Gextahub eat some. Gextahub ate the mushroom and was shaken by the foul taste. He proceeded to slap his own face rather sternly. Afterwards, he swelled with positivity. Oh, wait. Was that a sanity mushroom, not a healing mushroom? Okay. Eat a red one. Oh, we can give it to Frederick. Frederick will eat a red one. Frederick ate the mushroom and was shaken with pure disgust. He started spouting gibberish and danced around. Afterwards, he reported his wounds were healing rapidly. I am a god man! Watch me heal! I am Wolverine! <laughs> Alright, uh, let's... Uh, oh, we don't need to eat any more beans, though. Oh, that's right. We're not over uh, overly burdened anymore. I kind of want to see what's there. Or in the cave. Let's go over to this cave. Why does your loyalty keep going down, dude? 
Oh, because you're an alcoholic and you haven't drunk in a while. Let's explore this cave. We approached a cave. The entrance seemed to lead deep into the mountain. We needed a torch to uncover its mysteries. Unleash the torch. <laughs> Maybe we're just a bunch of alcoholic druggies. Because we're really like, there's a cave, man. I bet there's mushrooms in there. We arrived at a remarkable underground lake. The water seemed rich with algae, sustaining the growth of mushrooms with a vibrant hue. Let's get some mushrooms. It took a little while, but we managed to pick some. What the fuck is purple? This peculiar mushroom smells strikingly sweet. It tastes delicious, and all the problems seem to be gone for the moment. We'll take that. We'll take some more red. We are a little overburdened right now. We'll eat some beans. Can we not eat beans? Let's eat the blue mushroom. <laughs> we got some sanity. We can see farther. <laughs> Tripping them. Because Gex to Hub, when we found him, he was like, dude, you got to try shrooms. And <laughs> Frederick's like, hey, all right. <laughs> I'm high as a kite, bitches. I love exploring. <laughs> um, let's try and go this way around and avoid the tiger. I can see through time and space. This guy's getting a little less loyal. Um, once we get a little farther, we're going to offer them some booze. In the wilderness, it was nearly impossible to prevent an injury from becoming infected. Alexander Kettle's wound had begun to fester and secreted an astonishing degree of pus. All right, Alexander, you need to eat some mushrooms. <laughs> We've become like that dude who says pot is the... You know, you ever know that guy who smokes pot and says pot is the cure for everything? Like, I don't care if you smoke pot or if you eat pot brownies, but you've, we've all met that dude who's like, man, pot cures everything. <laughs> My arm got cut off. Smoke some weed, dude. <laughs> We're like, do some mushrooms. It's an infection. All right, Kettle, why don't you try? Wasn't Kettle the one with the infection? I think so. Got infected wound. Kettle, have some mushrooms, man. Alexander ate the mushrooms and was shaken with pure disgust. He began dribbling, staring at my foot. Afterwards, he reported his wounds were healing rapidly. Excellent. Um, should anybody else eat them? You're almost healed. You're almost healed. I like that. You're like, you don't get any because you're almost healed. Let's examine the shrine. Large building, a large building, loomed in front of us. Its stone walls were covered with ornate engravings. A circle of dried up blood had been drawn around the whole structure as a warning for anybody that dared to enter. Celestial symbols of the sun, moon, and stars were carved on the various surfaces. Let's go in. We carefully entered a well-preserved ceremonial chamber. If this place held any riches, I knew we would find them here. Our steps echoed as we approached the sacred altar. There's a moonstone. Oh, shit. In some worlds, you need moonstones to open up pyramids. That says one of three. I hope we don't need three. Let's take the golden owl head. And let us take the golden amulet. What a glorious day! That was exactly what we came for. As we took what we came for, I noticed a black nothingness began to form atop the altar. Like a pinprick in the flesh of reality, it was expanding steadily, visibly, destructively. All we could do was run away from it. Run! Run away! Like Sir Robin! Run far from it as possible and hope! Ah, uh, that is not good. Uh, let's see, where are we going to go? Probably do south if we can. Maybe better this way around? Shit, there's like a ravine here. There's some sort of dinosaur down there. Uh, keep running, dudes! Uh oh, this does not bode well. Uh oh, which way are we gonna go? There's like a whole ravine here, a ravine here. Oh god, Shere Khan's right there. We can go back around this way, I guess. Oh man, we gotta do it quickly though, before the black. Vortex thing gets there. That'll we try and go through there and hope there's a pass through the mountains. I think we might have to take on the tiger. Why don't we try a purple mushroom? Yeah, yeah, it got people happy. Dim's. Oh man, look at that. Loyalty is up. Elevated mood. Loyalty is temporary apparently, but for 20 days, these guys are high on shrimps. They don't care. <laughs> there's a black hole forming. Dude, I don't care, man. I understand causality. I understand. 
Let's go fight a tiger, dude! Yeah! Shrooms! Shroom squad, deploy! Let's attack that tiger. Um, we don't have any dynamite. Let's use these extra bullets. We're going to need them. Okay, we're going to do a shield and three healing. It's not going to help us hugely there. Double attack, triple attack. Triple attack is the most we can do. I think if we get an eye there, we can do the poison thing. Uh, let's poison somebody. I think I want to save one of those. I don't remember if any of the bonuses... Okay, aim shot. We'll use that. That'll be good. And then we'll use tactical advantage for shield. We're probably going to get damaged some. Oh man, Frederick, the tiger just attacked him. He's like, whatever. Uh, let's use that extra bullet. Let's see, what's he got? Four left? Precise attack. That's almost enough. There, we can finish him off. Don't Wait, can't we headbutt him? Yeah, we can stun him. Because you just headbutt a tiger. That's what you do. <laughs> Don't worry, I got this. Wham! Uh, we'll put up some more shield with tactical advantage. Guess we have to do these separately. A quick shot and an additional shield. Mushroom squad attack! Um, oh, I gotta hit end round. Also, stun only stops one of their attacks. Uh oh, Riyadh's bleeding. That ain't good. Uh, why don't we. Yeah, we'll use that. That'll give some shield and damage him. That's excellent. We'll use that for more shield. That should probably protect us. This might be famous last words. <laughs> oh, can we poison him? That would be excellent, too. And then I think we can use these for an aim shot. Yeah, there we go. Suck it, tiger! Now, I thought there was... Okay, that will heal. Yeah, we'll use Rite of Healing. I think we got this thing. Yeah! This is what we do, right? We go through the jungle and just kill things. We will take these. What are these worth? I would like this. I think we're going to be overburdened. We might have to drop them. We'll find out. So we got four things. That is more than we need. Oh, shit. Is this a dead end over here? Who's injured? Oh, Fred is. So why don't we do some more mushrooms? <laughs> That's the solution to everything. Let's give some to our leader. Frederick ate the mushroom with great delight. He began dribbling and staring at my foot. Uh, why don't we give Riyad one, too? Riyad ate the mushroom with great delight. He's like, I love mushrooms now. He went rigid and began to sweat profusely. Afterwards, he felt rejuvenated. Somehow, something altogether deviant now gripped Riyad. After the odd fever's trance, perhaps he was addicted to... Oh, no. Can you be addicted to shrooms? He's scared of butterflies now because he's having a bad trip. Okay, so he's not addicted, but he developed the negative trait. He's scared of butterflies and moths. He's having a bad trip. No. Oh, God damn it. So we're overburdened by four slots. Let's get rid of some water. God damn it. This one was for morale, I think. This was definitely for morale. What else are we going to get rid of? I think we need the Moonstone. We got too much shit, though. I think at this point, we just need to find the exit and not die. Uh, can we eat some beans? No. If we get rid of the torch and we get rid of the water, we'd still have too many. We never use these damn shovels. Oh, I hate to get rid of all that stuff, though. It's worth a lot. 
He not he's not doesn't just hate butterflies. He's scared of them. Wait, do you have a holy marking too? Oh wait, no, no, he's got the thick skin. What do we got? We're overburdened because that's gonna slow us down. And you know, we're just gonna walk a little ways and then eat stuff. Oh shit! There ain't no way. That's a dead end. Oh, fuck. That's not good. <laughs> Run! Hopefully this thing wears itself out. Uh-oh. Oh no, that is really not good. Holy shit, we've ruined time and space. I don't know how we're going to get out of here. We're screwed. I guess we should have gone the other way. Can't the ship come save us? Please. Uh, why don't we... Eat some beans. That solves the problem. I hate to, but we're going to get... Yeah, we'll get rid of our torches. We can get more torches later on. Let's eat some mushrooms. <laughs> Who else wants mushrooms? <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> we got to eat the mushroom with a wayward grin. He proceeded to slap his own face rather sternly. We're almost out of shrooms now. What we got to do is run through here and hope we don't hit that part. Maybe we can walk through the dark area. We can hope so at least. All right, this is not good. This is really, really not good. Run the other way! Oh, shit. We're fucked. We're beyond fucked. There's a hole in the universe. Why did we steal these sacred items? I, I don't... Like, when, when we got washed out, at least we, um, you know, we, we, we came up somewhere else. What happens when there's a giant black hole in the vortex? Or vortex in the universe? Do you show up somewhere else or does it just kill you? Uh, why don't we eat some chocolate while we're at it? Oh, hopefully we can't become addicted to chocolate too. And then... I wonder if these guys are having any of these kind of problems like Alistair Crawley and them. Uh, let's wait a day... We're screwed. This is not good. We died. <laughs> That's it. We were sucked into a black vortex because we stole from something. That sucks. We got pretty far. Oh, if we'd only gone the other way, maybe. That's it. Hopefully they remember us. I don't know if they're going to build a statue to us. Stupid Crawley probably wouldn't. We had all that good stuff, too. Oh, man, that is frustrating. Can we see the map like what it would have looked like empty? Oh man, we were screwed almost either way. Maybe we would have been able to get up and around if we would have gone the other way. This vortex? <laughs> the world probably is doomed. We probably destroyed all the world, so you're right. The statue probably doesn't matter. We died in expedition number four. We lasted 73 days. Uh, the average travel distance, I guess that's probably miles. We discovered 37% of the world, and we played for apparently 22 minutes. I thought it would stream a lot more than that. Well, that was a disappointing way to end, but that was a fun journey. This game is a blast. <laughs> I guess that's it, too. Nobody's going to catch us in fame because we just destroyed existence. And we probably don't care because we're high on mushrooms, man. That or maybe we didn't destroy existence and we're just all freaking out in the jungle on the shore because we're so high on uh so high on mushrooms <laughs> i destroyed his existence just there on the beach that was pretty cool though man that was a blast to play yeah i i, I bought that ages ago meaning to like stream it or whatever or record it for youtube i just never got around to it yeah it's a fun game and it's addicting i have only ever like i said got to the end of the game one time 
and I only finished in second place. And you can see why. We were so close. If only I could do it over again. That's the fun part of a roguelike, though, is what happens, happens. I'm guessing that was the way out? Because that's why there's a question mark? I don't know. Stupid fucking ravine, and there was no way across this ravine. It had us trapped. I mean, maybe it's our own fault for, you know, offending the gods and stealing stuff from natives, but whatever. It was a good time. We, we at least went down as the number one. We were number one when we destroyed existence. Well, everybody, I think that's going to be it for me. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. I had a good time. I hope you did, too. This was a blast. I might do more indie games in the future, too, and hopefully some more baseball in the coming week. Uh, so uh, have a great day, everybody. I'm going to go off and be like, I'm going to have mixed feelings. This game was so cool. It's like, yeah, we did great. It's like, oh, we were so close. So close. There are two worlds yet to visit. Take it easy, everybody, and I hope you all have great a great night.